So let's have a look at keyframes. Um, I'll make a sculpt just so I have something to keyframe. And then I'll uh, put down a chip to hold all my keyframes. So uh, you find keyframes in the animate section and then the keyframe and you just stamp one down. When you stamp it down it starts recording um, and then you stop recording by clicking on that. So um, if you click select it you can click on there to edit the keyframe or you can just use uh, shift and X which is L1 and X on the DS4. Uh, to start editing that keyframe and you can do anything you like pretty much uh, you can edit any property uh, you can move things around you can rotate it um, and then when you stop recording it will go back to normal while editing things you can press L1 and circle and if you're already out in the scene then that will end the um, recording if these were grouped for example and we were in here uh, editing stuff and then you press L1 and circle, it'll scope out first until you get to the top level in the scene and then it will end the recording. And then when this keyframe is powered, then it restores the state that it's uh, recorded. Um, so you can use uh, logic to power it, such as a switch, um, to have stuff happen when you have two keyframes on at the same time it actually averages between them so if we um, affect the ground color like this and we make one of the keyframes will make it purple and another keyframe will make it green then so this first one makes it purple the second one makes it green uh, if we turn both of them on at the same time, it just averages between them. It's all kind of being affected, the uh, red, green and blue values. So if you have a puppet that has poses like for um, like for running, for example, and then you add another keyframe that will put his arm straight up in the air for some reason, and then you power that. Well, let's just power it using a controller sensor. So let's say while you're holding triangle, his arms are up in the air. So if I'm standing still and I press triangle, his arms go up in the air. But if you're running at the same time, there's another keyframe trying to put his arms to his side. So now when you do that, it kind of blends between them and goes really weird. So if that's happening, that's the cause. You can also uh, preview what is what that what is stored on that keyframe. If you click on it to select it, then it will show you um, everything that it affects has these patch marks and it and it restores the states while you're selecting that keyframe. And then you can go into the same keyframe and you can uh, edit something else. You can edit as many things as you like with a single keyframe. So I can make the ground blue. And now when I select the keyframe, that one's got the marks and that one's got the marks and the uh, uh, but different kinds of properties are affected on them. Uh, they cannot edit inside of things, so they can't edit the contents of something. If I go and uh, uh, scope into here, I can't even scope in. Uh, and while I'm scoped in here, I can't access a keyframe at all. So you can't actually edit the contents of a thing, like notes of a uh, instrument, or um, shapes in a sculpt and things like that just the properties of a thing. So the properties actually includes where this is in the scene, for example, um, as well as the kind of tweak menu properties. You can also, while hovering over something that the keyframe has state stored for, then the keyframe starts kind of pulsing like that to show you that that object is affected by that keyframe. If we close this microchip though, then you can't see that keyframe at all and this doesn't pulse. So you'll have to open up the chip to see that. And while uh, the keyframe is selected, uh, you can press triangle on things to forget the state for, of that object for this keyframe. Um, and while recording, you can do the same. So I could do that. And now it's forgotten where that is and you stop recording. And now it won't affect that object at all. Uh, same for um, properties. If, if I 
uh, go in here, you can actually see those properties with the hatch marks as well and preview the uh, where the sliders are and so on. And you can press triangle on things to remove them. Uh, you can also affect the power, by the way. So you can go like that. And now when I turn on that keyframe or, or preview it, then that thing is turned off. While something is on, you can actually um, store the that it is on um, by uh, scoping in or uh, L1 and X onto the keyframe to record. And then you just turn it off. So now it's recorded that it's off. But then if you click it again, it's recorded that it's on. So now when you power this keyframe, it will turn on that object, which means if you then leave it off, then it will stay off until you turn this keyframe on like that. And then it uh, turns on that object. A keyframe also has a color so that you can kind of color code things and it has a name so you can put whatever. So if you have, uh, particularly if you have a timeline that has a lot of complex um, layers of animation and stuff, you can have all of your arm animation stuff in purple, all of your head animation stuff in blue and so on. So that it's easier to like look across things and find out uh, what stuff you actually want to edit. Um, and naming your keyframes is really vital as well because uh, there could be, say there's some, let's have a switch. If, we, uh, if this keyframe like turns on some switch somewhere and that switch is, is way off, hidden away in the, in the scene, um, you'll never remember where it is and what this keyframe affects. So then if you call this, so if you call this the switch behind the sculpt, then when you see this keyframe, you can go over here and say, oh, it's, it was this one over here. And you can say, do the same thing over here as well, give it a, a good name. And that's like definitely good practice to get into naming your keyframes. <laughs> I'd like to thank Hemlock, Jason AC, Hyper Dream Surfer, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dream's creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.